Hey, would you like to make your ball bounce with 50% more squish? Then this tutorial is for you. Learn how to make a ball bounce in Create Studio Pro. You can even make a chicken bounce. Hey everybody, keep watching and I'll show you how. This is Rainy's Tips with another Create Studio Pro tutorial. Use the circle shape to make the ball. At the very top in the shape pull down, click on the circle icon. Shrink the circle by setting the scale value to 30%. Now move the ball to the bottom of the canvas. Tip! The easiest way to accomplish that is with the position icons in the top right corner. Click on the one with the line at the bottom of the object. To determine the size of the squish, we will use guidelines. In the top right, click on the ruler icon and add a vertical line. The first line will go right in the middle of the canvas and it should also be in the middle of the ball. Add another vertical guideline and with your mouse, click and drag the line right until it touches the edge of the ball. When the line turns purple, release the mouse button. Now, add another guideline to the left edge of the ball. Next, Add a horizontal guideline and drag it down until it touches the top of the ball. Add another horizontal guideline and drag it halfway through the ball. Again, the line will turn purple when it is in position. To set the right and left guidelines for when the ball is squished, change the circle scale to 60%. Add two more vertical guidelines, positioning one on the right edge and the other on the left. Now return the circle scale back to 30%. To give us space to create the squish animation, move the playhead to the two second frame and expand the timeline by sliding the scale all the way to the right. Above the timeline, Click on Add Animation. A pop-up menu appears with a lot of options in the properties. Click on both Position and Scale. Make sure they are both selected. Now, look at the circle track on the timeline. You will notice two diamonds. You may need to shrink the timeline so you can see them both. We want the squish animation to last one-tenth of a second, so with your playhead, Position on the first diamond, click on the Frame Advance icon three times. With your mouse, click on the second diamond and drag it to the frame where the playhead is. On the canvas, click the top center handle of the circle and drag it down to the lower guideline. Click the circle's right handle and move to the outermost guideline. Do the same for the left handle. To see what the squish looks like, scrub the playhead between the two diamonds. Next, we need to desquish the ball. Move your playhead right of the last diamond and add another position plus scale animation. Advance the playhead three frames and move that last diamond back to the playhead location. Move each side edge of the ball to the inner guideline and the top edge to the top guideline. There, we are now back to the original ball shape. Hover your mouse between the last two diamonds and click. Drag your mouse moving the diamonds to the left until you only see three diamonds. What is happening is that the end of the squish animation and the start of the return animation is occurring at the same time. That completes the squish animation, and it is time to work on the bounce. Move the playhead prior to one second, but not all the way to the beginning. Click the top position icon to move the ball to the top of the canvas. Click on Add Animation. This time, select only the position property. To make the ball slow at the top and fast when it hits the bottom, we need to change the easing. Click on Easing to see the various options. Switch from In and Out to In. And then select Slow Fast. 
By experimentation, I found four tenths of a second was a good bounce duration. So advance the playhead 12 frames by clicking on the frame advance icon. Mouse click the second diamond and drag it back to the playhead. Use the position icon to move the ball to the bottom of the canvas. Click your mouse between the diamonds and move them to the right as far as they will go. So now we have the ball falling to the bottom, squishing, and returning back to a circle. The next step is to have the ball bounce up to the top. Move the playhead after the last diamond. Click on Add Animation. In Properties, click on Position. In Easing, switch from In to Out and click on Slow Fast. You may need to scroll the timeline to the right to see that last diamond. Advance the playhead 12 frames and move the last diamond to the playhead. Use the position icon to move the ball to the top. Click in the middle of the animation and drag it to the left as far as it can go. Now that we have created a ball bounce, let's set this up in a loop with multiple bounces. At this point, you should have five diamonds. If you have more, then you need to slide the animation so that the one starts at the same frame the previous one ends. Click on the first diamond and your playhead will jump to that frame. Above the timeline, click on the scissors icon to cut the track. You can see a portion of the diamond just after the cut. Select the clip before the cut and delete it. This is not necessary, but I am going to slide the clip so that it starts at time zero. Mouse click on the last diamond and cut the track again. This time, you should see part of the diamond before the cut. Sometimes I do not see the partial diamond, so to recover, I will do a Control Z to undo the cut, move the playhead forward a frame, and then cut. It is important to see that partial diamond or your animation is not going to work. Delete the clip after the cut and make sure that the clip ends on the diamond. When you look at the frame counter, you should see the clip is one second long. Let's duplicate the clip three times by clicking on the duplicate icon above the timeline. You can use the mouse scroll to see the bottom track. Then move the duplicates so that they are next to each other on the same track. Shrink the timeline to display more time and get rid of blank tracks by right mouse click and select Remove Excess Tracks. Let's play that and see how it looks. The bounce looks good, but there is a problem when the ball is at the top. It hangs there in place way too long. So let's see if we can fix that problem and compare it to the original. Click on the first clip and duplicate it. Group all the clips on the bottom track by dragging your mouse over them until there is a blue border on each. Use the keyboard shortcut Control G to group them. Back on the top track, let's change the blue ball to red using the color picker in the top right. Okay, let's explore the animation by putting the playhead at the start and step through frame by frame using the advanced frame icon. I will call out each frame. One, two, three, four, five. Did you notice that the ball doesn't really move during the first three frames? I move the playhead to the end and this time I will back up one frame at a time. One, two, three, four, five. The ball is pretty much in the same position for the last three frames. I am going to use the fact that the ball does not move the first three frames and the last three frames to overlap the clips. That will ensure the ball stays at the top only one tenth of a second instead of two tenths of a second. That will make the bounce appear more natural. Make a duplicate of the red ball and back the playhead three frames from the end. Click and drag the duplicate track so that it starts where the playhead is. Duplicate another track and move that three frames from the end. 
Do it one more time. Okay, now we have a blue ball and a red ball with the overlap tracks. To see better, I will move the blue ball to the left. Now let's compare them. The red ball seems more natural. There you go. That is how to create a bouncing ball in Create Studio Pro. Stick around if you want to see the effect applied to one of the characters, and I will also show how to make the bouncing object appear to be bounding into the camera. Okay, at this point this is pretty much review, so I will go through it fairly quick. I have created a new project and I am going to drag onto the canvas the chicken character. Since Create Studio Pro's characters have motion, I will take a snapshot. Delete the chicken track and drag the snapshot onto the canvas and scale it down. Position the chicken at the bottom. This time, I will eyeball where the guidelines will be placed. Okay, repeat the squish sequence we did on the ball. This time, we will need to adjust the side handles multiple times until the chicken wings are just touching the guidelines. Return the chicken to the starting guidelines. Add the position animation at the start using the slow fast easing and select in. Add the position animation to the in again using the slow fast easing and select out. Move the animation so each one starts at the frame the previous one ends. Delete the segment before the first diamond and the segment after the last diamond. Duplicate the clip and position the duplicates three frames before the end of the original. If you group these clips together, then you can do all kinds of interesting things. Hey everyone, have a good day and happy creating.